Ashraf, and today I'll be explaining to you what all of the files in the DVLC modding template are for, and the important things each contains. I personally use version 0.2.0 of the modding template, mainly because that was the version that was out when I first started modding. Most of the files should stay relatively constant through all the versions of the template, but I imagine the line numbers for specific pieces of code might change. This is nothing that a little exploring through your modding template can't fix. If you want me to do a video specifically on the most recent version of the modding template, please let me down in the comments below or in the poll in the top right corner if I remember to include it. So, within the modding template folder itself, there are multiple important folders. There is the advanced scripts folder, which contains more complex features of the game, the community assets folder, which contains extra sprites of Monica in the space room, thanks to the Monica After Story team, the docs folder, which is unimportant to this video and I honestly don't know anything about, the game folder, which I will talk more about later, the Monica route answer folder, which contains files that are needed if you want to play through the modding tutorial that's part of the template, and the original scripts folder, which contains all the dialogue from the original game. Now I'm going to explain some of the terminology that I'll be using for this tutorial, since I imagine that all of you are experienced coders. This may be the first project that some of you are creating, which is great. The first term is scripts. Now, this term has three meanings in the context of mod making. The first is for the dialogue itself. Just like in theater or in movies, all of the dialogue in the mod is called the script. The second is for the files themselves. Each .rby file in any of these folders is called a script. The third is for the structure of the game. You may have noticed when playing through other mods that the story of DVLC is divided into acts and days. This structure is created in the script.rpy file of the modding template which I will talk more about later. Now, this may be a bit confusing for you first time modders, so I will call the dialogue dialogue scripts, the files themselves just scripts or script files, and I will completely avoid calling the story structure scripts at all to avoid confusion. If you still get confused, let me know in the comments with the time code and I'll clarify it for you. Next term is defining. This term is used whenever you want to create a keyword for a line of code that you will use over and over again in your script files. This process is used to reduce the amount of time it takes to do simple actions and is known as defining. This can occur for variables, which I'll hopefully be doing a video on later, images, sounds, animations, and a whole bunch of other things. Next term is comments. Comments are a little bit the code marked by a hashtag symbol and editra. They are not read when your computer is processing and playing the mod, so you can use them to leave little notes for yourself in your code. This makes it easier for you to find certain parts of your code later, either to jump to easily or just to reference. Lastly is lines. As you code, you need to separate each code piece since they need to be read separately. For an analogy, think about how you type an essay. Each paragraph contains a different idea, like each piece of code. You need to separate the paragraphs in your writing by the press of the enter key, which can be done exactly the same way in coding. Each time you press enter in your code, you create a new line. These line numbers are marked in editor on the left side of the screen. I'll be referencing these line numbers so you can head to a specific spot in the file to find the code you need for reference. So more about this game folder. This folder is what you'll be sending your mod off in. Every single file you want to edit for your mod must be contained in the game folder because that is what the game will access when trying to play your mod. If you want to edit script files from any other folder, move them to this folder or just resave the files into this folder. This will be important because you will often need to edit some of the files in the advanced scripts folder, so make sure you bring them here first. Alright, now to start going through the files that are part of the modding template. I'll mostly be going in order of the folders, but there may be a few files that will be out of order. If I miss a file when going through them, I will talk about it a bit later in the video. Let's start with the script.rpy file. This is the first thing that's a bit out of order because there are two script.rpy files. Let's talk about the one in the game folder of the template first. This file defines the structure of the game into acts and days. Days work like they do in the real world. This part of the structure just deals with each day of the week that occurs in game. Acts divide the structure of the story into as many parts as you want. Usually a big change in the story, like a character death, will cause the game to change into the next act. The script.rpy file sets up the structure and calls upon other dialogue heavy script files that you will have as part of your mod. This is the file that you create the structure for your mod in for your actual mod project. 
Now let's talk about the script.rpy file that's in the advanced scripts folder. This file is the same as the one in the game folder, outlining the structure of the game, but it does this for the real game. This is a good example of how your script.rpy file should look like for your mod. Maybe not this complex though. This is a good reference and I would recommend not deleting this file until you are either releasing your mod or until you don't need to reference it anymore. Next is the options.rpy file. This file defines a lot of the basic information about your mod, including the mod's name, what version the mod is on, the build name for your mod, and the save directory for your mod. You will need to change all the things I just listed before you release your mod to avoid your players having any errors as they play your mod. The cgs.rpy file is next. CG is the full screen images of characters that you receive during your one-on-one -on -one encounters with the characters in the main game. This file defines all the CGs that are included in the main game. If you have any created in your mod and want to define them in this file, make sure you save this file to the game folder first. This file also allows you to reference the names of the CGs, which you will need to do in order to use these images in your code. The console.rpy file defines all the information for the in-game console. The console is the grayed out box that is in the corner of the screen that displays text as Monica deletes the other characters. While this is the purpose in the real game, you're able to use this for other messages as well in modding. This file defines the box's color and shape, the font for the text in its color, and other functions, which are complex sequences of code, for you to use later to show and hide the console as well as to display text in it. If you need to add or change any of the code in this file, make sure you save the file to the game folder first. The credits.rpy file defines all of the images used for the normal game's credits, including the CGs, the DDLC logo, and the Team Salvato logo. It also sets the font for the credits, defines the animations for scrolling the credits, and defines Monica's karaoke text. It pretty much contains all of the code used to create the in-game credits. To add or change this file, save it to your game folder first, but I think it would be just easier to create a new file for the credits for your mod. The definitions.rpy file is probably the most important file in here. It defines all of the audio, backgrounds, sprites, the images of the characters, and variables used in the main game. I would certainly recommend using this file to add in more character sprites, backgrounds, or audio, so make sure you save this to your game folder. Some important things contained in this file are the definitions for character variables, which are the key letters used to create dialogue in the mod, at line 1299, persistent variables, which are the variables used across all saves, at line 1311, and global variables, which include poem appeal points, the girls' names, who has read your poems, and a whole lot more, starting at line 1331. You'll most likely be changing something in here to fit your mod. The effects.rpy file defines a lot of important effects contained in the main game, including color inverting, screen tears, static, particle bursts, blood, the space background, the blue screen of death, and veins. To add your own effects or change existing effects, you can continue in this file after saving it to the games folder. The glitchedtext.rpy file defines how the glitched character text works in the main game. You most likely not need to change this file at all. The GUI.rpy file defines a lot of the user interface used within the main game, including the dialog boxes, menus, buttons, scroll bars, and the history screen. The poems.rpy file contains all of the poems from the main game. I would keep this file as reference, but I would certainly recommend creating a new file to house the poems you add to your mod, just so you can find them easier. The poems underscore special that rpy file contains all of the special poems from the main game. To add your own, you can use this file after saving it to the game folder or create your own file. The screen.rpy file defines features like the quick menu, dialogue and the speaker's name appearing, the navigation for the main menu, the load, save, and preference screens, and the layout for the history screen. The version of the character sprite art that is shown on the main menu is decided at line 517, but I wouldn't adjust it here. There's another file which we'll discuss later that is called main underscore menu rpy that will easily override all of the main menu preferences set here. There are two versions of the splash rpy file. We'll start with the one in the game folder. It includes a disclaimer message stating that your mod is a mod and that players should play the main game first. You must keep this disclaimer message Otherwise, you'll be violating the guidelines for mods. The logo for the mod is defined at line 29, the images for the girls' sprites for the menu, 
are defined starting at line 51. The background image for the menu, as well as the looping animation, are defined at lines 37 and 137. The splash.rpy file in the advanced scripts folder contains pretty much the same things, but they will be overridden by whatever you have in the other splash.rpy file. There is something important in here though that is not in the other file. The advanced scripts version of splash.rpy sets up the character files, which the game folder version does not. If you want to mess with the character files at all, grab the code that involves them, which starts at line 204, and paste it into the splash.rpy file in the game folder. The transform.rpy file defines character placement, character animations, transitions, and effects like white noise and vignette. You will most likely not need to change anything in this file. The daytime underscore monica underscore room.rpy file and the monica underscore sitting underscore expressions.rpy file both deal with the content that was provided by the monica after story team. They have created a day version of Monica's space room, as well as expressions for Monica when she is in both types of space room. All the definitions for these things are located in these two files. The import underscore dblc file imports saved data from dblc. The main underscore menu file defines the menu art and other main menu features. This is where you can change the sprite art that appears for characters on the main menu. It is already in your game folder, so change it as needed. The overrides file is a file that allows you to override certain features in the main game, if needed. I don't know too much about this, as I personally have never needed to use it. Another feature that the Monica After Story team added to this modding template is a tutorial. If you launch the modding template in RumPy instead of accessing the script files, you can play through a tutorial where Monica explains how to start coding. There are several different files that are part of this, including script underscore example.rpy, tutorials.rpy, and a series of files labeled t1.rpy through t9.rpy. If you don't want to use the tutorial the modding template provides, you can delete all of these files from your template. I would recommend keeping script underscore example.rpy for a bit though, because there are a lot of comments in there that teach you how to code and explain what each line of code does. It's a good reference. If you decide to keep these files as you start the code, make sure you delete them before you distribute your mod to other people. The last series of files are all about the dialogue from the main game. There are a series of files labeled script-ch0.rpy through script-ch5.rpy. These contain the dialogue from the main events in the game. These are a good reference if you want to see how something was coded in the main game, or if you want to see the dialogue that occurred. Then there's a series of files labeled script-exclusive-insertgirlsnamehere.rpy. These files contain the dialogue for the special scenes with the girls, the ones that usually involve a seiji. There are two files labeled script-poemgame.rpy, one in the advanced scripts folder, and the other in the original scripts folder. I honestly don't know the difference between them, but they include all the code from the poem game that occurs every night in the main game. There are also two files labeled script-poemresponses.rpy, which exist in the same folders. I also don't know the difference between them, but they include the responses from all the characters when you give them your poems in Act 1. There's also script-poemresponses2.rpy in the original scripts folder that contains the poem responses for Act 2. These are all the files that exist in version 0.2.0 of the modding template. Like I said at the start of the video, things may have changed between versions, so there may be some differences between the files you have and the files I have, but the main purposes should remain the same. Once again, if you'd like me to do a separate video on the most recent version of the modding template, let me know in the poll or the comments. One last thing I'd like to add are my recommendations on how to work with the modding template. I would recommend having two copies of the modding template downloaded and saved in RunPy. One without any deletions that you can use as reference, and one where you've deleted all unnecessary files where you actually create your mod. While all the files contained in the modding template are good for reference, a lot of them aren't needed for normal mod making and just make Editra take longer to open your files when you're starting it up. The deletions I would recommend from the modding template you're using to create your mod are the following. The tutorial files, including tutorials.rpy, script-example.rpy, and the t1.rpy through t9.rpy files, and the original dialog files from the game, which are basically everything in the original scripts folder, as well as the script-poem-responses-rpy file in the advanced scripts folder. I would also recommend creating new files for each day of your mod, as well as creating a poems file for your mod. Make sure you save these files with the .rpy extension when you're creating them. Well, that's it. I hope this was helpful to you. If there's any other video tutorials you'd like me to make, please let me know down in the comments below. See you guys.